Caroline, if I could make you czar, if you could run Calorie Cycle and the Pro, how would you design the perfect system? What would be your priorities? Okay, so the first thing I'll tell you is what I would do if I were the pro and I were evil, okay? If I were evil, it's a good, it's a good exercise. Right? I like this. We, we do this exercise in this. If this I, like I mean, this. this is a helpful exercise. Like if I'm, if I'm the PRO and I'm evil, I'm gonna try to, bam, to bamboozle you. And here's what I'm gonna try to do. I am going to throw all of the ways that something can be sustainable at you and then decide to uh, kind of jerry-rig the fee structure so that it works in my favor. So just as an example, I won't get into all of the life cycle assessment stuff, but just as an example, like a plastic grocery bag and a paper grocery bag. The paper grocery bag, we can recycle it. We're very happy about that. The plastic grocery bag, we can't really recycle it very well, but it has a very low carbon footprint, lower than the paper grocery bag. This is an unfortunate reality of our time. I think it's fixable, but we'll get to that later. Um, if I'm trying to bamboozle you, what I say is, well, you know what? I really think that we should incentivize the lowest carbon footprint option. And then I incentivize the use of the, of the plastic bag that we're already using. And I'm not saying that we have to pit all of our sustainability goals against each other. What I do think is that we need to focus. And the focus of EPR, as I understand it, Heidi can correct me if I'm wrong, I think the goal here was circularity. The goal here was recyclable materials, increasing the recycling rate, and then getting a lot of this pollution uh, out, of our, out of our oceans and off of our highways. And so if my goal is circularity, then I need to make sure that that's what I'm incentivizing for. So we need to look at all of them, all of these materials, and packaging's a big spectrum of materials. Like, I mean, there's EPR for paint, mattresses, and tires. These are all pretty singular groups of materials. Packaging, big group of materials. So we need to step back and think about what does it look like for each of these things to be circular? And then we need to make sure that's what we're incentivizing for. So if I'm Cal Recycle, I am looking at the PRO's plan and looking for, are you actually trying to incentivize circularity? That has to be the focus. And the second thing I have, think we have to do, you did make me czar, so there are multiple parts of this list. I will shut up until you're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I think that we need to do is break down all of the different uh, big groups of packaging that we're gonna be dealing with. What works to incentivize circularity for shopping bags is gonna be very different than what incentivizes circularity for poultry packaging. I don't see a world anytime soon in which we're gonna be packaging raw chicken in paper. The, I mean, it's just not a reality. And even if we did, that paper isn't recyclable. It's covered in chicken guts. Like, it's not gonna happen. So for, you know, for certain kinds of food packaging, what does circularity look like? It, it's probably going to look like compostable materials. So I think that we're going to need to look at these big groups of packaging applications and say, what is it we want to incentivize? And then help the PRO, help all of these producers actually all move in the same direction towards circularity for that application.